All right, we're going to clear this equation of fractions before we solve it. You can solve it just dealing with the fractions. Um, whenever you add or subtract, you have to get common denominators. That is a lot of work, so it's uh, convenient if we can just get rid of all these fractions. The idea is you find the least common denominator. So between 5, 15, and 3, your LCD is 15 we will multiply each side of the equation by 15. First time through, I'll just show you explicitly what I'm up to. And then I'll go through the same problem again, uh, just showing the shorthand. So you multiply each side by 15. That's why I'm allowed to just do this, because I'm balancing it. That means I have to send the 15 in to each term on each side. and I'm really multiplying fractions, so instead of 15, let's call this 15 over 1, okay? I want it to be a fraction. This 4, I'd like it to be a fraction. We'll make it 4 over 1, okay? If I'm working with fractions, I like everything to be a fraction. All right, so I'm going to have to write this. So this will be 15 over 1. times four-fifths plus, we have our 15 over 1 times two-fifteenths x. Then I send in 15 over 1 here times the two-thirds x. Plus, and then 15 over 1 times our 4 over 1. This might seem a little silly. We don't really need that, but I'm just working at being consistent here. All right, now before we do anything else, the whole point of this was to get rid of fractions, and now I've got more than I started with. It's because we're going to reduce before we multiply. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 15 three times. 3 times 4 is 12. Bring down this sign. We have 15 goes into 15 once. 15 goes into 15 once. 1 times 2, simply 2 x. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 15 five times. 5 times 2. 10 x. And here I can't do any reducing. I just multiply. 15 times 4 is 60. So this equation really represents the same relationship as the initial one with all these fractions. It's just now you don't have to look at fractions. It's easier computationally to solve this problem. All right, um, we'll get rid of our 2x. Here's 8x. Get rid of that 60. So what do we have now? Step out a little. And this will be a negative 60 subtract 12. negative 48 and get rid of that 8 so 8 goes to 8 once and you have x equals uh, negative 6 okay I'm gonna show you another way of solving the same problem 
but using the shorthand that I prefer. And that's because I think you can agree uh, this got pretty complicated right about here. So I'll just show you an easier way to write this. And we'll focus in on just what we need to see here. All right, so here's the original equation. And the least common denominator is 15. Um, so all I do is I write a 15 over each term. Which is essentially what we ended up doing here. We distributed the 15 to each term. Okay, So instead of writing it as a fraction, I just write the 15 like that. And then I go back and act as if it's a fraction. So I'll say 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 15 three times. 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, bring down the plus sign. <clears throat> Fifteen goes into fifteen once. Fifteen goes into fifteen once. One times two is two. Bring down the x. Um, then three goes into three once. Three goes into fifteen five times. Five times two is ten. I forgot to bring down the equal sign. And now I bring down the x, bring down the plus sign. And over here, there's no denominator. So I just multiply 15 times 4. This gives us 60. So notice this line is the same as this line. Okay, This is just a little bit neater if you write it this way. All right, and if you're looking at any of my worksheets with answer keys or following my videos, uh, you're going to have to be able to follow this shorthand. The least common denominator of 5, 10, and 4 is 20. So I put 20 over each term. And again, I act as if this is a fraction. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 20 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. Bring down the x and the plus sign. 10 goes into 10 once. 10 goes into 20 twice. 2 times 7 is 14. Here, uh, there's no, no denominator by which to reduce, so we just multiply. 20 times negative 2 is negative 40. Bring down your x and your plus sign. And now 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 20, 5, five times, and 5 times 3 is 15. Now to solve the equation, um, I'll say get rid of this negative 40. So you have 48x plus 14. That's a 0. You don't have to write it. Um, Let's get rid of this 14. So you have 48x equals 1. One more step to get x by itself. Simply Get rid of that 48, you divide by 48.
48 goes into itself once. X equals 1 48. Okay. We'll look at one that's a little bit different. You have three denominators to worry about here. The least common denominator is going to be 12. <clears throat> but I'm not going to put a 12 over the 5x or the negative 2. You have a set of parentheses. So you just deal with what's in front of the parentheses and everything inside is protected. You could start the problem out by distributing the three but you would end up with two fractions here, a fraction there, a fraction there. It gets more complicated that way. So this is the the fastest approach. So I just put my 12 over the 3, a 12 here, and a 12 here. Okay. Then proceed as before. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. Bring down what you haven't touched. All right, I'm still going to have to distribute that 9, but I haven't done that yet. 6 goes into 6 once. 6 goes into 12 twice. 2 times 1 is 2. I forgot to bring down this plus sign. And then the equal sign. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 12 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. Let's clean this this side. Let's clean it up. So send in the 9. That gives you 45x minus 18. Bring down what you haven't used. You can put these two together. Okay. So negative 18 and positive 2, that gives us a negative 16. So I use that and I use that. Bring down what we haven't touched, the 45x. Now you want to get rid of the 16. That's a zero, 24. Get rid of the 45. And you have, keep moving up x equals, um, this has a common factor of 3, so 3 goes into 24 8 times, 3 goes into 45 15 times. We'll look at one more problem that can be solved uh, two different ways. So I've written it twice. Um, you know, sometimes you learn something and you get in the habit of using it, so you keep using it. We could, oh, I didn't write the same thing. Um, let's change that to a 5.
All right, so I'll do this by clearing of fractions on this side, and then over here, I'll just solve it without messing with that. But the least common denominator is a 5. It's the only denominator. So I could multiply by 5, 5, and 5. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 15. 15. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 5 once. 1 times 4 is 4. Bring down our x and our negative. And now here, there's no denominator. So you just multiply 5 times 3 and 5 times 7. Bring down that equal sign. We'll get rid of the 15. Just draw a line here. and So we have 4x equals 50. Get rid of that 4. And then 4 goes into 4 once, so you have x equals, and we could reduce that to 25 halves, and that's perfectly good answer. You don't have to write that as a mixed number. All right, but this was kind of crazy to clear it of fractions. You only had one fraction. So let's just solve it a uh, more practical way. Get rid of that 3. So now you have 4 fifths x equals 10. You want to get rid of the 4 fifths. Um, it's held by multiplication. So I'm going to use the opposite operation, which is division. When you divide by a fraction, you take the reciprocal and multiply. Uh, all of a sudden, I wish this was a fraction. I'll put it over a 1. If I'm working with fractions, I like all fractions. All right, so if I'm going to divide by 4 fifths, that means I'm going to multiply by 5 fourths. Multiply by 5 fourths. 4 goes into 4 once, 5 and 5 once. x equals, you've got 50 over 4, which reduces to. 25 over 2.